So at the end of part one of this lecture, I posed this question. How did you do? Well, note what we want to do because we're subtracting a multiple of b from some multiple of a is draw negative b. That will be useful. And whatever drawing is correct here must have negative b in it somewhere. Now notice there's only one of them that actually has a vector pointing in this direction. It's e. And so if you look, here's 1a, 2a, 3a, and then minus 1b, minus 2b. And we started here and we end here, so we draw the result this way. And so e is correct. You might have been tempted by d, but note, d isn't 3a minus 2b, it's 3a plus 2b. b points in that direction, and there are two of those here. c technically is showing a minus b, even though that's b there, but note, you go a, and then you go backwards through b. I don't encourage you to ever draw vector subtraction this way. It just tends to confuse people because once you've drawn it, it's unclear whether the result should point this way towards this end or this way towards this end. a and b have nothing to do with 3a minus 2b because these vectors are neither b nor negative b. They're an incorrect attempt to flip b end for end. Now that we understand, at least graphically, how to carry out vector addition and subtraction, we can use that to look at one of the most important concepts with vectors, which is decomposition of a vector. Decomposition just means breaking it into pieces, and there's a particular way we're going to break it into pieces. First, we're going to define some axes, and we can define the axes any way we want. I've drawn the way you're probably most comfortable with. And we shift the vector right onto the axes, or you can think of it as shifting the axes to the vector. In any case, now we drop perpendiculars from the tip of the vector onto each axis, and it's very important that these are perpendicular to the axes. Replace those with two vectors that we're giving very particular names. If the vector is a, these are the vectors ax and ay. And now, just rearranging them, you can see that a is the vector sum of ax and ay. ax and ay are what we call the component vectors of a. They're two vectors that point parallel to our chosen axes, which add up to give the vector. The sizes, or magnitudes, of the component vectors are what we call the components of A. So the notation is that AX vector and AY vector are the component vectors, which add up to give A, and AX and AY, which are scalars, are the components. Notice the component vectors must be perpendicular to each other because they point along the axes, and the axes were perpendicular to each other. And so whenever we do a vector decomposition, the original vector is always the hypotenuse of the triangle formed with its component vectors you may have already learned how to write down a vector in terms of its components, and that's good, and we'll look at that in a moment. But remember, the vector is not its components. The vector is the arrow. The reason that's important to realize is that if you keep the vector the same but redefine your axes, you'll end up with different components, even though the vector itself hasn't changed. And in fact, we don't even have to define our axes perpendicular to each other. However, you get into a lot of mathematical complications if you use axes that aren't perpendicular to each other, and so we won't do it, and that's the last I'll say about that. Here are a couple of vectors, and here are some axes, and I haven't even put units on because perhaps these are abstract vectors. How do you read these vectors off of the pictures? Let's start with this a. This a is defined by two components, and I'm going to draw what they are here and here. We would call this distance along here the x component of a. 
and we would call this vertical distance here the y component of a. Now notice I've put a vector symbol on a because it is a vector. I haven't put vector symbols on the components. They aren't vectors, they're scalars. Well what are ax and ay? You can probably see ax is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And ay, well a points downwards and y is increasing in the positive direction upwards, so ay must be negative. And so ax is 5 and ay is negative 3. And we can now write a this way. I would write it as 5 and this funny i symbol with a hat on it, minus 3 and this funny J with a hat on it. Okay, those might look intimidating, but there's no need for them to be intimidating. This I hat just means in the positive X direction. And this J hat just means in the positive Y direction. So you just read this 5 in the positive I direction and minus 3 in the positive Y direction. You may have learned to write a vector like this as an ordered pair, like so or perhaps using angle brackets instead of round brackets. That's fine. Um, also, because here the labels tell you which component is which, there's nothing wrong with reversing their order. You could write it this way. But if you use this notation, it's the order that tells you the first one is the x component and the second one is the y component. Note, many students would look at this vector and incorrectly say, that its x component is 6 and its y component is 2. Do you see why they would say that? That's where the end is, isn't it? But that's not what we care about. What we care about is how far over and down this vector carries us. So similarly this b, I hope you can see, is negative 2 i hat plus 3 j hat. So here's an assortment of vectors, A, B, C, each written in component form, and you should pause the video and verify that you see how I got those. But I want to clarify some notation and terminology. For example, we say that A is the sum of its component vectors, A vector x and A vector y. And you can see, just looking at it, that A vector x is just 4i hat. But what we mean when we say a x is not the component vector, but the component, the thing that multiplies the i hat, which in this case is 4 meters in all of these cases. And so for example b, I could say that the component vectors are bx vector, which is i hat, and by vector, which is negative 6j hat, and both of those are in meters. But I could also say that just the components of b are what I would call bx with no vector symbol, which is just one meter, and by, again no vector symbol, which is negative 6 meters. The real advantage of component form is that it makes vector addition really easy. Here's an a, here's a b, I've drawn the vector addition, and you just have to collect the i's and the j's. Or in other words, you add the x components up, so you're going to get negative 6 meters plus negative 2 meters i, plus 3 meters minus 5 meters j, and so that's it, negative 8 meters i minus 2 meters j. Multiplying a vector by a scalar, algebraically, is even easier than adding. You just multiply both components by the scalar. So for example, if we start with this vector a, and we multiply it by 3, we're just going to multiply the x component by 3 to get 6, and the y component by 3 to get 9. And 
as we expect from our graphical intuition about this process, we get a vector that points in the same direction as the original one and is three times as long. You may be surprised at how long we're going to spend working in one dimension in this course. This is quite deliberate, it's because it really makes very little difference to the actual physics whether we're working in one dimension or more, and so it's easier to work in one dimension where we don't have directions to complicate things. Well, it's easy to sort of get away with ignoring vectors when you're working in one dimension. Although I'm going to say that you shouldn't try to get away with, this, with it. Let me explain what I mean with an example. As we'll see in the next unit, a displacement is a subtraction of two position vectors, a final position minus an initial position. If that doesn't mean anything to you yet, don't worry about it. All I'm doing is setting up a situation where I'm going to give you two vectors and show their subtraction. So let's suppose that the initial position is 2 i hat meters and the final position is 5 i hat meters. Here are the initial and final position vectors. I should probably draw them right on top of each other, but that would be difficult to read, so I've slightly offset them from each other. To subtract them, let's take RF and we'll flip RI around and put it tail to tip with RF, and then delta R, the displacement, is here. Working with the numbers, I have delta R is just this, and that gives 3 i hat meters. Well, so what? Well, notice something. The magnitude of RF was 5 meters, and the magnitude of RI was 2 meters. And so it looks like I could have just subtracted their magnitudes to get the correct magnitude, 3 meters, of delta R. Can I always do this? Well, to answer that, I'm going to keep working by example. I'm going to take the initial position vector and I'm going to change it around to negative 1 meter i hat. So now the vector subtraction looks like this, and delta r is here. So in numbers, that's like this. Notice it's no longer true that the magnitude of delta r, which is 6 meters, is the magnitude of rf, which is 5 meters, minus the magnitude of r, which is 1 meter. Notice a magnitude is always positive. That's no longer true. So apparently this doesn't always work, and so we shouldn't use it. We only use rules if they always work. What is true, though, is that the x component of delta r is the subtraction of the x components of rf and ri. And that's just what we've already seen as how we do vector addition and subtraction. So, even though we're in one dimension, we should still pay attention to the difference between magnitudes of vectors and their components. In particular, notice, vectors are neither negative nor positive. They have direction, and that's different from being negative or positive. Magnitudes, though, are always positive by definition, whereas components of vectors can be positive or negative. Keeping this straight will save you a lot of confusion later on. So, for example, these three statements all have very different meaning. I encourage you, and this may be on a homework assignment, to draw some arbitrary vectors a and b and work out what each of these statements would mean in pictures.